Hey guys, welcome back. This tomato lamb chop recipe is my standby recipe. That is, if I have lamb in hand. And usually the other ingredients are very easily available in the pantry. And I can cook this up at a very short notice. In meat, what I really love is lamb. There's something special about the combination of meat and the fat, the flavor and the texture that I just can't resist. The lamb chop that I'm using are fresh, but you can also use frozen. You can defrost it and then marinate it. Or you can even marinate the lamb chop and keep them in the freezer to use some other day. It works perfectly well. What I have accompanied these lamb chops is with the turmeric and mustard potatoes. Now, potatoes and lamb is a match made in heaven, always works. And this flavor of the tomato lamb chop and the mustard and turmeric potato is absolutely divine. Want to learn how to do it? So let's get cooking. To marinate the lamb chops, I'm going to use some red chili. I'm going to use garlic, ginger, parsley, and I'm going to use a ready-made tomato pesto. Uh, you can make pesto yourself, but sometimes it's easier to buy things in and make life a lot easier. Uh, I'm using a red chili because uh, I've got red pesto to go with it. If I'm using a green pesto, I'll probably set a green chili. But if you don't have that, you can always add uh, smoked paprika powder, red chili powder or cane pepper. That would work well. Or if you like the flavor of green chili, add that. These are a bit less spicy. Now, the main spicy part inside the chili comes from the seeds. But that is what makes it really nice and spicy. Now, if you don't like it too spicy, you can always take it off and discard it. I'm going to chop these up. Also, when you go to chop your red chilies or green chilies, make sure you wash your hands after that. Otherwise, all if you scratch your nose or your eyes, they'll burn badly. This goes in the bowl. Then some ginger. You can grate the ginger, you can slice the ginger, you can either way you like it. Uh, some people don't like the big chunks of ginger or big pieces. So for them, I would say either you grate it very finely or you, you can buy even a ready-made paste of ginger. Even that works well. I quite like ginger. I love to have the bite of ginger in the food. I think it tastes quite nice. Again, all, all this is very personal preferences. And you have, you have to cook and do things which you like or which your family likes to eat. And that, that's important. That's the beauty of food. This is done. Ginger also goes in. A little red chili here. Then garlic. I have a very large clove, so I'll probably use just half of clove of garlic. Again, finely chop the garlic. Slice it first. And then chop it. You can also buy a minced garlic or a garlic paste from the market ready made. Perfectly okay to use. Garlic in and some chopped parsley. The herbs give a very nice flavor, give it freshness to the dish. Uh, you, you can use any green herb which you like. You want to use cilantro or coriander, works well. You, you want to use tarragon, it works well also. So just chop it up. You don't want to do it very finely chopped. You want it to have some kind of a bite, some kind of a texture. Uh, I quite like the stalks of parsley to go into the food. I think it gives a very nice crunch. When you're eating it, it gives a very nice crunch. And I don't like to very, very finely chop it, especially for these dishes. So just uh, roughly chopped. I'm going to put half in there and I'm going to use the other half for my other dish. I'm also going to use the, the parsley in the potatoes, which will accompany the lamb. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to actually make mustard potatoes. So I've got that. Now I've got this lamb chops, which I've cut them into single bone. I've removed all the fat and with the tip of a knife, I literally just uh, prick the lamb. This helps to tenderize the lamb. So when you put them into marinade, it soaks in flavor as well. You can probably ask your butcher to uh, get it ready for you. Uh, 
Some pieces have got a fat in them because they were thin edges to so have kept the fat. The fat does render a breakdown when you cook. A lot of people like to have the fat around the lamb, which is perfectly okay if you like to eat that. I don't really enjoy eating too much of fat, so I try and cut it very lean. These, these are single bone lamb chops. If you want to make it into double bone, uh, you can use two bones and get a nice meaty eye. Even they are actually quite nice. So the lamb is done. The vegetables are done. And now for a marinade, in the vegetables, all you do is add oil. A good two to three tablespoons of oil. And we've got ready-made tomato pesto. And the ready-made tomato pesto also has got its own oil in it, which is nice to flavor. And so around two tablespoons of tomato pesto. If you have tomato chutney, you can use tomato chutney. Even that would work well. Salt. Be careful with the salt because the pesto already has a little bit of salt in it. And lemon juice. A good squeeze of lemon juice. Lemon juice, when you put it into marinades, helps the pores or the protein to open up. And you can then extract more flavor or add more flavor into your protein. Just mix that together. Have a very quick taste. Look at the color. It's already looking nice. It's got a nice bright red color. Oh, nice. A good kick in the chili. The herb, the parsley comes out quite well. But it is a tomato and it's a garlic. It gives it a nice flavor to the dish. Going to marinate the, the lamb. Just rub the lamb, the meat, in the oil. Now you can also use the same marinade to do, uh, say, prawns, grilled prawns, crayfish, lobster, a piece of fish, uh, chicken, vegetables. If you're using vegetables, you can actually parboil uh, your broccoli or a carrot and you can add it to the marinade or even draw it works well and put them onto the grill or cook them in the oven. I will cook them onto a pan, but there's a, there's a trick of actually also cooking the stuff in the oven. Most of the time when you cook them in the oven, you put it onto a hot oven or and onto a roasting tray. But the best way to get the kind of a barbecue feel is to put it onto a wire rack and place a wire rack on a roasting tray. So what that does is it helps the air to circulate around the meats or the piece of chicken or fish what you're cooking so you get like a nice grill or a barbecue effect and it keeps it very nice and moist because a circulates and cooks it all the way through if you put it onto a roasting tray and bake it or rather roast it it begins to boil in the marinade it will still cook but it will not taste as what you get into a kebab or into a grill as or a barbecue so lamb is done i will let that rest idly for minimum of two hours uh, the longer the better so even if you do it overnight and keep it, it is perfectly okay. And while this rests for a couple of hours, I will actually make my next part of the dish, which is the potatoes. I'm going to do the potatoes next. The lamb has gone into the marinade. This is a very simple style of making potatoes. It's inspired from South India, where they use uh, mustard seeds and curry leaves and garlic and ginger. I'm going to do a very simple variation because the lamb has got a lot of flavors and marinades which will be quite nice to have on its own and the potatoes are only there to help it give it some kind of a structure or add a certain like a side element to the dish and normally back in india you would add a lot more into it and make it very flavorful and have it on its own uh, but because it is part of that i'm keeping it very simple i will only put mustard seeds and mustard paste into this so i'm going to get a pan hot and a small quantity of oil. <coughs> I'm just using black mustard seeds here. The black mustard seeds have the most intense flavor as such in terms of all the varieties of mustard. You get black mustard, red mustard, and yellow mustard. The yellow mustard are more decorative and more for salads than for dressings. But to cook, the black and the red ones are the best. Uh, these need to go into warm oil for them to open up and splutter. And when they open up and splutter, they crack up and they release their flavors of the natural oils into the oil in the pan and that is the first flavor profile you built up with the dish 
and then you add in your potatoes and just cook it very gently. Uh, I've boiled the potatoes in just salt. Now, if you wanted to have a richer flavor or more flavor to it, you can always add a, uh, in the salted water while you're boiling some red chili powder, cumin powder or turmeric powder to give it different flavor and more intense. That also works well. But in this case, it is just plain boiled potato in salted water. The oil is nice and hot. In goes my mustard seeds. And I will let that gently open up and crackle. It could have been a little hotter, but that's fine. But you can notice it. It is now beginning to pop. And as it begins to pop, the flavors are released. If I cook this for too long, then the, the spice burns out and becomes very bitter. It will spoil the entire dish. So never really put it onto a very hot oil. Just into medium heat and let it gently open up on its own. <coughs> This is almost there. And all I do now is just spoon in the potatoes, lower the heat, sprinkle a little salt. Just toss the potatoes in the oil and the mustard seeds. All I'm doing is I'm warming it through. I season with salt and I want the outside to get slightly colored and take a slight shade of a very light brown and also the, the oil gives a very nice gloss to the potatoes now this is all being done at a medium to a low heat and you can see the small specks of mustard seeds they stick on to the potatoes and I think visually it looks very interesting when you put food onto a plate when you look at the dish, you find the potatoes, they have a nice color to it. They're coated with the mustard seeds. It looks very appealing. So eye appeal is very important. This is almost done. And then mustard paste. I'm using English mustard. I just love English mustard. I love mustard basically. Two teaspoons of mustard and I gently mix them up. I'm going to switch off the heat. Oh, the smell of mustard along with the potatoes. It is nice. And some fresh parsley. And the dish is ready. You can have this as it is. Uh, sometimes when I'm very peckish and I'm hungry and I want to do something very simple, I just make a bowl of potatoes and just uh, mix some mayo and have it like a salad. Or I have leftover potatoes, I mix them with some leaves, some onions and fresh tomatoes and make it into a sandwich and it, it works like magic. So okay, the potatoes are done. Lamb is into marinade. The next thing is to cook the lamb. For that, I've got my grill ready and I'm going to get my lamb out of the fridge. Whenever you cook your lamb, never take it out of the fridge and put it directly onto a grill. Always bring it to a room temperature. Leave it outside the fridge for a good 15, 20, 20 minutes for it to slightly become to room temperature. When you put cold meat onto a hot oven, it really shocks it and water begins to ooze out. So it's best to keep it for a short duration outside to build room temperature. Also, when you're going to grill them, I have a special uh, I have a special grill here, but you can also use a non-stick pan or like an oven, like I said, or a barbecue. Never put it onto very high heat. So I heat my pan up. I feel the heat on the palm of my hand. I'm going to lower the heat down just to kickstart. Now, as soon as I put food onto the grill, the temperature does begin to go down. And if it does begin to go down, you can always crank up the heat and get to the right temperature. Never on a very high heat. It will only sear the outside and it will char it, but the center will not be cooked. Toss your lamb in the marinade and then remove the excess marinade from the lamb chop. Don't you remember we had lightly pricked it with a knife, so that has helped for it to absorb all the flavors. 
So there goes one, that's two, that's three. Excess marina taken off. Four. And a five. Keep the marinade intact. That, that will come handy for you afterwards to use. You're going to baste the lamb again with the marinade. There's a lot of flavor in the marinade. And if you always have an extra marinade, you can always use it for one more time. It's perfectly okay. I also like to use the marinade to drizzle on the plate sometimes or use that oil to go into like a salad dressing. But that has got a lot of flavor in it. At this stage, I'm going to slightly increase the heat for it to cook further. And when you look at the piece of lamb on the edges, the color begins to change. And that gives you an indication that the lamb is cooking. Now again, the cooking of the lamb is a personal preference, how strong you want it. I like it to have it medium in the center or slightly rare. If you like it well done, cook it for longer. But when the color changes, becomes dark on one side, I'm going to flip it. So I know it is cooked on that side. And then the second side cooks. Now these are single bone lamb chops, so they will cook quite fast. If they are two bone or three bone, the large pieces, they will take a longer time to cook. So you need to control the heat of your grill very carefully. The lamb is cooked now on the bottom side. I'm going to flip it over. Now always remember when you are flipping over the lamb, always start with the first piece you put on the grill. So the first piece goes right here, so I move it the same direction. So I'm going to go anti-clockwise and I flip them in the same uh, sequence of how I put them down. So the cooking is going to be perfect. That's one, two, three, four, and a five. And what I do is I've got a little bit of the marinade. I'm going to baste it. So this side will again absorb some of the flavors of the oil. Oh, the aroma is just so nice. I mean, it already looks so nice. The colors that come out nice. It's nice and golden. It's nicely charred on, on the edges. And this is again now being cooked on a medium to a low heat, not on a very high heat. So each side, I would say approximately between two and a half to three minutes to cook the lamb. And what you would get is a perfect cooked lamb, right pink in the center. If you want to make it well done, I would say do between three and a half to four minutes on each side, but always on a medium to a slightly lower heat, but not very low. The lamb is done. You can feel the firmness, so it's quite firm. So this is done. I'm going to switch off the heat and I will let the lamb rest in the pan for just two minutes for it to become soft. In the meantime, we can organize it plating the dish. The lamb is ready, the potato is ready. The last thing to do is to actually put the food on onto a plate. Now, when you want to put food on into a plate, make it look interesting. So uh, get some kind of a ceramic way, which has got a nice, uh, color to wear, a good texture, some kind of a character. So when you put food down in front of your guests and your family, it pleases the eye. And this is a day of Instagram. People want to take videos and watch you on uh, YouTube. So you want to make it look nice for yourself. I have taken a very nice plate. It's got a good texture. So you can see the whole texture of the plate and it's also got a very nice color. Keeping in mind it's a darker plate because I've got the potatoes and I've got the vibrant uh, uh, lamb to go with it. Uh, first thing first is I'm going to add the potatoes. So just spoon the mustard potatoes on the plate. Oh, the, the smell is so nice. The, the mustard, the, the seasoning is just about right. It's just a very nice comforting dish and lamb and potato is a great combination. It's a very simple combination, but then simple things always work the best. So just put a few pieces of potatoes and I've got lamb so I'm going to put the lamb right across so I've got 
one we've got two and I've got three three pieces and I will get to enjoy that and it's for my camera guys and the crew they are looking forward I can see them at the back saying can we please try some can we please try some sprinkle a little bit of chopped parsley and you know what I have the pesto with the oil I'm going to spoon that and actually more than that I'm going to use my oil from the marinade so why am I not using that so I've got the oil from the marinade the lamb is quite juicy so you don't really need any sauce to go with that so I put and I will cheat and I will add a teaspoon of the pesto and the little sauce on the side I think it works quite nicely and lastly a sprig of parsley and if you want you can add lemon on the side but for me I think that is just about right you got all the flavors in it so this is my tomato chili grilled lamb chop with mustard potatoes very simple very easy to make make sure you guys make it at home share it with your friends and family and leave your comments on the section below so as usual happy cooking and bon appetit